what a joy to be in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord Most High. And are you blessed in the presence of God? Amen. We blessed. And uh, we'd like to invite more you, more of you to come and worship together with us. We need a worship team. So let's give God a big hand. And also, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Sister Louis and the worship team. Amen. And we're looking forward to see Sister Franz. Sister Franz, practice with us and sing and worship together with us. We need you here. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we need many worship teams. Uh, we need the musician as well. So even though at uh, the planting period, but God has been so good. And we have wonderful worshiper in this place. And this is a place that you can find that this is a place that we can truly worship God and just be in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Most High. Hallelujah. So once again, welcome to Global Mission Vision Fellowship. And we love to have you here and to invite you to come and to worship together with us, to sing together with us, and to serve together with us, and to study the Word of God together with us here on every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at the address at A461, A461 Garden Grove Believer, Garden Grove City, California. And we are also here on every Friday night at 7 p.m. for the prayer service. So you're most welcome to join us on Friday or Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. Friday at 7 p.m. And would you be just look into your bulletin, okay, your bulletin. This coming Saturday, we are going to have the potluck and karaoke, okay? So it's a wonderful time. So this Saturday, coming Saturday, on June 1st, we are going to have the karaoke and potluck through the event that we call the Business Fellowship. So you are most welcome to bring any drink, any dish, any snacks, or anything that we can share to one another. And prepare your song with your YouTube link so that we can sing together and such a wonderful time. People said Friday night, we call Saturday night, right? <laughs> it's a time for us and this is the family time. So you can bring any family members, your friends to come and join us and just let us know so that we can prepare the table uh, to serve you better. And then on June 16th, we are going to have the father celebration. The father celebration. Uh, so we have a father celebration here in the morning and we also on Sunday morning and we also have the father celebration on Sunday afternoon and once again if you like to sing karaoke then on June 16 in the afternoon you can also go there uh, after four o'clock we are going after the service we are going to have the karaoke park for people who love it to sing and to worship the Lord together and then on June 9, we are still working with Sister Louis. We are planning to have a service at the beach, right? So just pray for that and then we're going to be there, okay? So let's go to the seashore, enjoy the sunshine. You want to swim, you want to fish, go ahead with that. Now, let us continue with our series on the 12 disciples. The 12 disciples. We know that Jesus had the 12 disciples. And we have learned about Simon Peter. We have learned about Andrew, the brothers of Peter. And today, we are going to study the first uh, message uh, in the book uh, uh, about the Apostle James. He is known as the son of Zebedee and also the brother of John, another disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what are the lessons that you and I can learn today? No, and there are so many lessons that we can learn from God's servant. But today I would like to study together with you the topic controlling our tempers through the story of James and John and God's sermon. Now let me go very quickly to give uh, an introduction, a short introduction about James, the disciple of the Lord Jesus, also called as the Apostle. James is quite a common name that we hear in our society today. Uh, yes, we have one of the singers who came to sing together with us every month. His name is James, right? So it is a very popular name, but many people in our modern world today do not know the significant meanings of that name. And this name has become more popular 
when Christians want to name their children with the names of the great apostle. And in this case, the apostle James and the disciple of the Lord Jesus. And the apostle James is also a name known to become James the Great. Now, there are two disciples of the Lord Jesus and both of them call as James. <clears throat> so, usually the Bible makes the differences by saying James the son of Zebedee or James the son of Alphys to make the difference. Uh, but sometimes in the circle they don't call like that. They will call the bigger one and a smaller one. <clears throat> so in this case, James, the son of Zebedee, was called as James the Great. And the other James, son of Alphys, were called the James the Less. It does not mean that they are, this one is more important or the other one is not important in comparing to one another. It's just like saying that the bigger brother and the younger brother. Okay, so James, the bigger brother, is the son of Zebedee. And James, the smaller brother, because he's younger, is called as the son of Alphaeus. So, James is the elder brother of John. And both of them came to respond to the call of the Lord Jesus at the same time, just like Peter and Andrew. So, James and John were close to Jesus because many people may not know the fact that they were the close cousin of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we know that? Because their mother was Salome and Salome was the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So, that's why they were a lot closer to the Lord Jesus. And maybe they grew up together, they talked together, they knew each other very well. So they had that bond for a long time. And now, once they became the disciple of the Lord Jesus, so that relationship continued to extend uh, in a deeper way. James and John was also the first four disciples called by the Lord Jesus. And we can see in the book of Matthew chapter 8, chapter 4 from verse 18. So in the book of Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18, we see that Jesus called the first two disciples. Who were they? Here. And Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their net and followed him. Who were the next two disciples? Is right after this we see the, the answer. In verse number 24, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their net. And Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Many times before, I share about the calling of the Lord and responding to the call of the Lord. So today, I'm not going to share that message because it's repeated, but we are going to go back sometime from time to time again. Now, Peter, James, and John were in the inner circle with the Lord Jesus. And I said that because they were the cousins, so they close. But not only that, but because of their curiosity, because of their hunger to know more from the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter, James, and John, as we hear most of the time in the Bible, that these three names are very special. And there are, cert cert there are certain events that took place, only three of them were there. And many other disciples were made up here, may not see directly, but maybe heard from these three apostles or disciples to report about the story. Like for example, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. We see that the presence of James was there. Maybe the other disciples was outside, okay? But Peter, James, and John was always there side by side with the Lord Jesus. And like in the story of the raising of Cyrus, the daughter, they was also there, and especially in the 
story or the event of the transfiguration, we know that only Peter, James, and John were there, and for sure. Other disciples maybe right there at the down at the hill and the bottom of the hill where the transfiguration took place. And we know that when Jesus was agonizing and praying in the garden of Gethsemane, so also in the same way that Jesus was speaking together with James. And other disciples, maybe they was asleep or was sleeping. Now in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 10, we see that once again, we just read also uh, earlier that we see that they might also listen to the Lord Jesus about the calling of Peter, that I'm going to make you to become the fisher of men. And we see that there are times like, for example, in Mark chapter 13, verse 3, Peter and James also ask Jesus secretly or privately. And we also see that one of the stories that we are going to learn at the end of this lesson is it the mother of James and John asked Jesus that Jesus would allow James and John would sit on the right and on the left of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, now, let us begin to see another factor about James and John. James and John was also known as the Boanerges, meaning the sons of thunder. What does that mean? If we said that you are the son of thunder, when people give us a name, it meaning to say their timber is not very light, right? When we said a son of thunder, the people who easily got upset very easily, Jesus grew up together with them. So Jesus knew about their tempers. And James and John were known as maybe the top person in the society in those days. And maybe they got upset very easily, or maybe before they were converted, they could be also be become the good fighter in the society in those days. And that's why the people called them and the sons of thunders, right? And Jesus repeat that name, okay? If someone will call you, you're the tiger, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, you will have maybe the attitude, ah, you're the lions or certain names that we know it have the meanings that go with that name but we see the transformation when they came to know the lord jesus christ later on now in mark chapter 3 verse 13 we see that jesus went up on the mountainside and called him those he wanted and they came to him he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. So these are the sending out of the Lord Jesus when the Lord Jesus gave them the power, the third disciple, and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed: Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, to them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunders. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealous, and Judah Iscariot, who betrayed him. So we just repeat once again about the name of these disciples. But we see the significant things here is that we see that James and John, just like Peter, only these three people have special name, right? Peter. Ah, or we see that uh, this one, Simon, was named as Peter. And James and John were called as the sons of thunders. And in later on in their life, we are going to see that kind of thunder in the love of God, thunder in the power of God, thunder in the passion for God being revealed in their life. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 9, from verse 51, we begin to see the characteristic of James and John here. That the Bible begins to reveal to you and I so that we can also discover about their characteristics. So you can read together here. Luke chapter 9 verse 51. As the time approaches for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem and he sent messengers on ahead 
who went into Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. You see now, Jesus was about to enter into the Samaritan village. And Jesus was already at least a little bit known to the people in those days. So he sent the disciple to go into the Samaritan village and to prepare for him there when he go there and minister to the people. But we see what happened. The people there did not welcome the Lord Jesus Christ at the moment. They were not maybe just because of the cultural issue. We know that the Jewish people and the Samaritan are not in good terms with one another. Okay? And especially the Samaritan always have the inferior inferiority. And the Jewish people always said that you are the mixed people. Okay? You are the Gentile people. <laughs> you are not good. You are not faithful to God. Uh, and we are the chosen ones. So the Jewish people did not want to have anything to do with the Samaritan. So maybe because of that cultural background, the Samaritan, or Samaritan also very rebellious and they don't want. Okay, you look down on us and we don't care for you. Now, in that moment, we begin to see the sun, the characteristic of the Son of Thunder has been revealed. Now, when the disciple James and John saw, the, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? You see, only when the people rejected them, they could not bear it. They could not take it. Brother Mike, if people abandon you, are you going to say, Lord, let me call the fire now from heaven to destroy them? No. Yeah, no. Well, before I do it, now I don't do it tomorrow. Exactly. Our life before was different. If we are not able to call fire, what is inside of our heart? My goodness, one day you will know me, right? Or uh, at least we are going to say something that we curse them in our heart. Because of the temple. But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. So that is the scripture that I want to begin to focus with you today. And let us begin to say, to see what does it mean. Many of us struggle with a quick or a very fiery temper. Any one of us still have that one? Is a temper control our life? Yeah. You see that. When I play basketball or sport and in, the, in the park, and you can feel immediately who has the quick temper, who has a very strong temper, and even we call the killing spirit. People just touch them immediately, things that come out from their mouth. And you can see that the killing spirit is in their eyes, even. So, in our society today, we see that many people do not control well about the expression. They have no way to control and they let the temper to control themselves and then it got into the fight. Last week, there was also another Native American here. He's a Native American of us. And then, when, I, when, when during the game, that some people have something and they're not very happy, and after the game, he was just complaining and he tried to go to those people. And I knew these people are the gangster. And if he went there, for sure, he would be in, in bad shape. So I tried to talk with him very nicely and try to help him and stop him from going there. But he says, I want to fight, I want to fight. And then he just opened his phone to me and he showed me, did you see? This is the fight that I beat the other guy. And he said that I'm very strong. And I said, yes, you are very strong. But you look at 10 of them over there. Can you beat 10 of them? And as I begin to talk to him, he gets a little bit better, but still, he knows and he understands what I mean. Now he knows the situation. So he dare not go there. But he's still talking, he's still sitting there, was not happy. And then I tried to spend time with him and begin to talk to him. Controlling our temper is very, very important. Amen. 
And the Bible said that a person who easily lose his temper is a fool. I'm sorry. That's what the Bible said. When you cannot control yourself, it is said, or it used a metaphor as a city whose walls are broken down. When you cannot control your temper, yes, it is a city wall which is broken down. When that person go into the fight, for sure, you know that he will be destroyed, and maybe his life also was in the danger. And we know that a person with a hot temper, they usually have a lot of conflicts with many other people around him. He was easily offended, and he can also easily offend other people. And I can also list for you a lot of scripture here that will tell us about that. We should not let our con our temper to control us. A soft answer turn away wrath, but a harsh word stir up anger. Just a harsh word alone. How much more when we let the temper to control us and let us lead us into the fight or the argue with other people? And this is the reason why the prison are not empty in the United States. We have more than one million prisoner in all of the state of the United States. More than one million, and it is so full that even today, if you are going to steal the thing in California, especially if it's not reached to two thousand US dollar, they will not put you into jail. Why? Because the prison. Are too full, and if this food is there, because many and the majority of the people could not control their tempers. So I don't need to say much about this, but you all understand about this. But sometimes we understand, we know it, but we practice. It's another story. First of all, we see from this story, the zeal or the passion. With the love, could be disastrous. It's just like the story of James and John. Yeah, they are very passionate. They are willing to go there, but when they face something, they could get very upset. Our zeal is 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 great, and we need it to have you. Our passion is important, but it must be used properly. It must be controlled wisely. It must be demonstrated in love. You know that many people have the gifting, and for sure, James and John saw the Lord Jesus perform so many miracles. So they knew that when they ask Jesus and Jesus agree, then they even can call the fire to come down upon the people. But when you have the gifting, when you have the ability, it is not for you to abuse it, because once you abuse it, you are going to bring a lot of pain to other people. You can create hurt. You could bring damages to other, and it could be the reason for strife and the division. It could lead into the destruction, and it's also it could lead into many broken relationship. Another example that we can see from a great prophet of God. Now his name is Elisha. What happened to Elisha? How many of us know? And when you look from this story, you will be surprised. A great man of God, okay? But we have to understand. At this moment, Elisha was only a new. He was very new in the ministry, even though he followed the great prophets Elisha, but he was not in the ministry there yet. His life had not been transformed yet. His life is just newly transformed just a moment ago when. The fire, the Holy Spirit, come upon him. You remember the story when Elisha was taken up into heaven, and Elisha was asking God, "I want the double portion of you." And the Lord also answered. And when he saw Elisha was taken up, taken up to heaven, then at that time he saw and he cried out, and at that time the double anointing of God was upon Elisha. But Elisha, at the moment, at the beginning, he doesn't know how to control or to use the anointing in the right way. And we can see what did he do. From there, Elisha went up to Bethel, 
And as he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and cheered at him. Get out of here, boldly. They said, get out of here, boldly. Oh my goodness. We know that he doesn't have a lot of hair. And we know that from the story that Elisha was not a good looking man. You're already a bold man and you're not good looking man. You look at the face, you know. So, but why? Why Elisha begin to do this action? He turned around, looked at them and called out a curses on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the wood and mouthed 42 of the boy. 42 of the boy. And he went on to Mount Carmel and from there returned to Samaria. You know why? Because they were bullied for a long time. Elisha was bullied by the children for a long time. They always mocked at him for a long time. And even at the time that his master was about taken up to heaven, and people just laughed at him, said, Oh, when your master was taken away, you will become nobody. You are not important. You are going to be lost. You are going to go back and become a farmer. So that eager, ego is still inside of him. And that anger was inside of him. So at the beginning, when he has the power, he doesn't know how to use it properly. And it caused the destruction to 42 boys. In the same way with the Apostle Paul. And you know that he was zeal for the Lord. But he doesn't understand. And that zeal and passion lead him to the persecution of Christians. And even the stoning of Stephen, the death of Stephen, and the persecution of the early church was mainly caused by the Apostle Paul. But we know that later on in their ministry and their life, they have become different person. They are willing to die for other people. So the first thing that from this story that you and I need to remind ourselves is that zeal without love could be disastrous. And maybe some of you may understand that. You want to help other people, but because we don't understand, and we cause the problem. And I just watched a video clip just the other day, that there are two video clips that goes together. There was the two men who, was, who were carrying a big glass, okay? the glass for the wall, a big glass. And both of them are very carefully just hold it and carry it to the car. And then there's a pass driver, uh, uh, the, uh, the bystander, there's another one who just, just go by and saw these people are carrying the, the glasses. So he had the good intention. So he come immediately and the other guy said, no, 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 no. But he just came and when he just touched it, you know what happened. The glasses, just fell and it's broken. Yes, sometimes without good intention. And there was also another story, another video that I see that the two fishermen, they were carrying a very big fish. And both of them were carrying and they slowly walking up to the hill because it was a little bit steep. And then there are also another one who tried to help. But what happened in his hurry? He just came and he moved on his shoulder and because he, he was a little bit taller than the other guy, so he lift up the fish and the fish just fell down and it's go back, <laughs> rolling it down. And we can see the anger of the other. We don't need your help. <laughs> so we need to be very careful. Yes, we have a heart, but it's very important. The second lesson that you and I can learn here is that accepting the rebuke wisely. At that time, when the Lord Jesus began to rebuke James, we see that when Jesus called James and John for them to say yes to the Lord Jesus, that is already quite a humility. You are my cousin, and now you want to become my Lord? You are my cousin, we have played together, and now you call me into the ministry, and I have to serve you, right? It loses my face. And now, Jesus rebuked him in front of other people. Maybe he will lose his faith and he got upset. Come on, man. We are brothers. We are cousins. Why do you do this to me? Right? Many times, 
because we cannot control our temper. So we take it very serious. And some people begin to give us a good advice, but we thought that they want to humiliate us. When people try to give us a good evaluation, but we thought that we will criticize or they criticize us. We become so sensitive and because of that, it broke the relationship and it even divided the family and even the family have been broken just because that we could not take the rebuke or even the advice from other people. So today, let us remind ourselves, just like in the story of James, it took him a lot of humility. It took him a lot of pain. It took him a lot of submission to the Lord, submission to God's will, submission to the Lordship, and submission to the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us still let the old man to reign in our life? How many of us still let the ego to activate it or to operate it in our life? We may often feel justified in losing our temper, isn't it? Yeah, I'm upset because I'm upset because he's like that. I'm upset because he's this. I'm upset because he's not right. I'm upset because. <laughs> but we usually justify our anger. But the Bible always tells us that we have to forgive, and we have to forgive. Forgive how many times? Seventy-seven times. Hallelujah! Is that easy? It's not easy at all. But just like we said, that it takes a lot of humility for every one of us. But it's also by the help of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper, the one who strengthens you and I, the one who can help us to understand, then we can receive and we can take the rebuke in a very wise way. And those who take the advice from the, from the wise people, their life will for sure become better. Thirdly and lastly, we must know our mission. And in this story, like the story of James, that the story is to go to Samari Samaria in order to do mission. It's not the time for you to get upset here. It's not the time for you to say that I have no faith because of you. It's not the time to get upset or complaining. Our zeal is not to boast about our human relationship. James can do so. We are a good cousin. Give me faith. Help me. Okay, even though I'm wrong, cover it up, right? Even though I didn't do it right, cover it up. Don't let other people know. But our zeal is not the most about our human relationship. Our head knowledge about Jesus, our achievement, our story, our experience, our anointing, or our gifting. It is our desire. It is that our desire must be submitted to the Lordship of God. Because we are called to serve and not to be served. Our yearning must be in line with God's will and direction. And that leads us to the conclusion through the story of the mother of James and John. And from the request of Salome, the mother of James and John in the book, Matthew chapter 20, 22, we can also see that these two brothers inherited the characters from the mother. What does that mean? Matthew chapter 22, verse 20. 20. Matthew chapter 20, verse 22. 20, sorry. Then the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus, and with her sons, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right, and the other at your left in your kingdom. Mother hearts, we know. She won her children to be great. And that's why she asked, James and John will be on the right and on the left when Jesus became king. So meaning to say that both of them are the vice minister, right? The prime minister, isn't it? They are the, like, like the vice president and the great hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. But at that time, that Jesus replied, you don't know what you are asking. Jesus said to them, can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answer. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. But the important thing here that Jesus said, 
when the ten heard about this, they were in indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentile lord it over them, and their high officer exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great amongst you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is our mission. And if our tempers are not well controlled, we may destroy the mission. So let us know that you and I need to pray that God is going to help us to control our temper so that we are not asking the things of this world. And Jesus said very clear that in the world, the people want the power. They want the position. They want fame. Just like the rulers of the Ten Time. They want to become the Lord over other people. The high officer want to have the authority over other people. But as the servant leaders, as the children of God, as the servant of God, as the pastor, as the believer who believe in the Lord Jesus, Jesus said, not so with all of you and I. But we have to become the last if we want to be the first. And just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Our mission is not to boast ourselves and our ego and our temper in order to destroy other people. Our mission is to let people to know about God. Our mission is to let people to understand the heart of God. Our mission is to save people from the condemnation. Our mission is to let the people to experience power, God's power and love. And our mission is to reconcile people to God. And when you let your temper, your anger to be there in the midst of our relationship, then it will bring about the division. It will bring about the strife. And even among the disciples of the Lord Jesus, when they heard about that, they were not very happy at the request of Salome, the mother of James and John. The Bible said they were even indignant. They was not happy. They was even upset at that request of Salome. So let us close today and remind ourselves that anger, yes, it is a valid, valid emotion for every one of us. And many times, anger is not always sinful. And we can see that Jesus also pulled the anger Right? But when you and I do not properly control our anger in the right context, in the right situation, it may cause a lot of issues. We need to learn and we need to trust the Holy Spirit to help you and I in order to learn the lesson of submission, the lesson of humility. I was also a very proud person before. So much that people just say a little bit things and then I just turn away and just walk from it and I will never go to that, that house anymore. And because of that, I also lose the relationship. And when the tough time came in my life and I need help from other people, I dare not go and talk to these people because of my anger, because of my Temper because of what I did to them. And in the same way today, may God help you and I so that we are not going to let the bitterness, we are not going to let the anger, we are not going to let the upset, we are not going to let the resentment to con continue to control our life. But you and I are going to declare that we have the freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word today and remind all of us about controlling our tempers. Father, in this modern world, when everything is so fast, when life is so busy, when we are being pressured by many, many things and many assignments in this world, 
We may lose our temper easily. And we may hurt other people. We may offend other people. And Father, we pray that today as we learn about this story. Lord, help us to remember and remind us the people that we once caused hurt and pain and the division in their life. So that we can also learn and pray today that God, you're going to strengthen us so that we can be humble enough and brave enough and strong enough to approach those people and to apologize to them and to ask for the reconciliation. Father James and John, known as the sons of thunders. But then, in the end of their life, as they begin to follow you, serve you, their characters have been transformed. And they no longer call at the sons of thunders in a literary sense at the people of anger. But they have become the son of thunders because they bring the thunders of love from God to the people. So much that they are willing to die their life for the salvation of the Lord. So much that they are willing to go extra mile in order to bring the gospel and share the love of God to the life of the thousands of the people. Father, we pray that may the thunder of love, may the thunder of power, may the thunder of celebration, may the thunder of peace, may the thunder of the anointing, may the thunder of the gracious word we continue to be revealed in our life and through our life at the mighty work of the Holy Spirit. And that our life will never be the same, Father. And we are known at the great servant of God. Father, we pray for those who want to give the offering and to bless for the kingdom of, 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 of your kingdom. Father, we pray that you're going to prosper their hand. You want to bless their business and you are going to multiply whatever that they are doing. And may you continue to protect our family and bless our family and give us a great new week. And we continue to magnify your name. We continue to share your love to the people surrounding us. And now may the love of God, Father Almighty, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' mighty name, may everybody will say, Amen and Amen.